in vivo to photon imaging uh, truly uh, revolutionized our understanding of uh, microglia biology. Uh, since the first uh, imaging of microglia was performed in 2005, uh, it's uh, when we really gained this appreciation about how highly dynamic these cells are. And this is information that we could not have uh, obtained from snapshots from histopathology. So developing imaging modalities to study microglia cells has been integral to every research effort related to um, uh, understanding these cells in physiology and disease. So the uh, I think that after the original imaging of microglia by using fluorescent reporters, the next uh, in the normal brain, the next frontier was to study those in disease. And uh, my lab uh, developed uh, uh, protocols to be able, we were imaging protocols to be able to study microglia, not only the brain, but also the spinal cord. And we performed the first in vivo live imaging of microglia in uh, the spinal cord in models of multiple sclerosis, which is uh, a, a autoimmune neurologic disease with neurodegeneration. And that's where we made the discovery about the perivascular clustering of these cells at areas of blood-brain barrier disruption. So I think that the two photon imaging really played a critical role for us to be able to dissect uh, the uh, different steps in a disease process and identify if these cells are upstream or downstream of, uh, of, of, of pathology, which we can really, the two photon imaging, uh, uh, especially longitudinal in vivo photon imaging uh, has been uh, uh, really a cornerstone of our research program uh, to be able to dissect uh, the different uh, stages uh, of uh, lesions and what are the different roles that microglia play in this uh, process. And uh, this uh, study supported that microglia are upstream drivers uh, together with uh, um, uh, cerebrovascular alterations, upstream drivers of the disease uh, uh, process. Uh, I think that the uh, we have uh, the imaging is primarily focused on uh, morphologic uh, changes, uh, and I think that the, the work that is very actively done now in many labs, including mine, is uh, uh, imaging of microglia together with other cells, so to be able to see cell-cell interactions. And uh, this is uh, um, uh, one of the protocols we developed to be able to image simultaneously microglia with uh, active neurons, uh, combining calcium imaging imaging in neurons with microglia motility. And uh, this, I think, is a, is a paradigm that can also be combined with behavioral paradigms. Uh, we used whisker stimulation to be able to physiologically evoke neuronal activity. So we can ask the question not only what is the cell-cell interactions at baseline, but also how these interactions change when physiologically ev activity is evoked. And uh, these, I think, uh, uh, are now well established to be tested in animal models of disease. So, for example, in a brain with Alzheimer's disease or in a brain with already uh, being hyperexcitable, how do these cell interactions between microglia and neurons uh, change and how does this also affect um, a, a neuronal firing, but also synaptic changes uh, in neurons uh, as well. Um, and uh, I think that uh, uh, microglia themselves are very active from a signaling uh, uh, standpoint. So, I think the development of biosensors to be able to uh, identify active uh, uh, changes, signaling changes in these cells uh, will be essential uh, for us to uh, fully understand uh, their role uh, in the brain.